The Battery Buzz podcast is brought to you by HB Fuller Company. HB Fuller is one of the battery industry's leading suppliers of adhesive, encapsulant, coatings, and sealants for the EV and battery industry. And welcome to the Battery Bud Podcast, the show for battery professionals by battery professionals, keeping you connected to what's new with batteries and the people that help build them. Your battery special hosts, myself, Elizabeth Canaz, and Jermaine Mario Salbraj are back for our next episode. Now let's get started. Thank you for joining us. This week we're welcoming special guests Andrea Bartolini and Shane Brody with Canon USA. And we're looking forward to our discussion with Andrea and Shane to learn more about Canon's equipment solutions. Happy to be here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. No, this should be fun. Um, To give a little bit of background on you both, Andrea Bartolini was born in Cesena, Italy. He uh, completed his degrees in aerospace engineering and uh, MBA at Bologna University in Italy and also the Illinois Institute of Technology in the US. Andrea joined Canon in 2015 and is a member of the automotive sales group. And now he takes care of uh, R&D and lab trials for the North America team, which is awesome. And Shane, uh, you are the technical sales engineer of Canon USA uh, based in Pittsburgh, correct? Correct. Nice. And you received your uh, Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering from Penn State in 2019. Um, And you enjoy skateboarding, hiking, and also your 130-pound dog, Goose. I selfishly want to hear more about Goose than anything else. Oh, we could talk all day about him. He's too big, (laughs) and his stories are much bigger. (laughs) (laughs) Well, welcome. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks Thanks for for joining us. us. Thank you. So it was great seeing you guys um, at the Battery Show a few weeks ago. So what did you guys think of the new venue? Uh, The parking was a bit tough. Yeah. (laughs) Biggest thing, (laughs) but it was great. It was a really big show, a lot of exhibitors, a lot of attendees. It was really interesting. And I think it's only going to get bigger as the battery technology develops and also gets bigger and more pervasive throughout the automotive and really every industry. Yeah, there was a lot of attendees. It was it was really yeah. a good show. Um, and I think a lot of, you know, uh, different people from different segments, you know, joined. So I thought it was it was great. What did you think, Jermaine? Yeah, likewise. I mean, the breadth of it was just crazy, you know, just trying to walk and see everything. But also we got a lot of foot traffic by our, our area. So it was good to kind of see all your contacts all in one place. I just think that's so unique. and was good yeah i agree nice well i wanted to kind of get andre and chain and and kind of talk to you guys about canon um first could you kind of give a brief overview of canon usa and kind of some of your offerings how your uh your setup is like the divisions that you have sure so um canon usa is a subdivision of the canon group headquartered in italy it was the headquarters was made in 1965 um, then branched the united states in 1977 here at canon usa we're located a little bit north of pittsburgh pennsylvania in cranberry township which both of you have been to Um, we have two manufacturing facilities our main site which holds our r d lab our engineering departments um our administration buildings is all in cranberry township and then up the road a little bit is another manufacturing facility specifically just for manufacturing and it is located in a place called zillianople pennsylvania um within canon usa we have an engineering department which contains software engineering electrical engineering mechanical engineering uh project management department a department that pretty much just focuses on manuals for our equipment and then we have a stock spare parts department which all of our customers utilize and we tend to dip into whenever we manufacture our machines um there's a lot that we have here we also have a um an an r d lab department which andrea is the um 
the owner and operator of. We have about three machines, two phonic robots, a spray booth, a few other um, smaller dosing machines. There's a lot of things that we can do here in Pittsburgh. Awesome. Yeah, and sorry, I'll just go back. I, uh, we, we have about 68 employees here in, at Canon USA. Okay. And um, we also have a, a very large technical service department, which is very critical in our line of business which is headquartered here, that we service all of North America. Nice. Yeah, I know you mentioned, Elizabeth and I, we've both had the pleasure of being at your facility, and it's it's great. And it's, yeah, especially like the, the R&D, the, the tech service part, like being able to have customers and people come on site, you know, it was a great resource for us, and we learned a lot. So it was, um, it's, it's good to see. I know it's definitely great to have uh, our headquarters has a, a, a much larger R&D department with more machines, more capabilities, but it's still really, really great to have in North America instead of traveling across the Atlantic. Um, but we can do a lot here it, nearly as much as what they can do, but it, it comes in handy. Everybody seems to like it. It's great. It's a, it's a valuable asset to have. I'm glad yeah, you guys enjoyed it, too. Yeah, it was definitely um, a learning experience, I think, for myself as well. So can you tell us a little bit about what makes, you know, Canon unique? Like, what are you guys doing, um, especially specifically in the battery space or um, automotive that you think that sets you apart or different from what is currently out on the market? So I'd say that we are more so on the forefront of what's happening. Uh, um, a lot of the industry is more of acts as a response to certain industries and certain products coming to uh, consumers or, or OEMs, vehicle manufacturers. Um, we're more so on the forefront of developing new technologies for that instead of as, as a response. So um, like we've worked with you guys for battery potting. We've also worked um, with other companies for um, structural battery covers. So the actual pack of the battery, um, we have worked um, with co different materials, different composite materials to actually make something that's not only a cover or an encapsulation of the battery cells, but also acts as a, a structural part of the vehicle. Just to name a few. But it, it's just, it, it's really interesting and we, we like to get ahead of everything, even if certain, you know, certain technologies might not pan out. It's, it's really good for us to at least have a foot in the door and understanding of what we can be part of and help with. Awesome. Also because it's a new application, meaning, right. like Shane said, uh, we are a pretty old company and the Polyurethane has been around for many, many years. Uh, it's an established type type of it and uh, with many established applications, this is something new. And so being able to be uh, be present with research and development and come up with solution, it's very exciting. Well put. Yeah, that's awesome. No, it's, it's and it's, it's always fun when we can work on those projects together, right? We're both kind of doing a little bit of the same thing, a little bit on the forefront side. So when those synergies happen, that's... Um, it's exciting and that's kind of where we want to be right we want to have these partners uh in that space um and kind of speaking of that and some of the projects that we've been working on you know the impingement technology andrea you kind of mentioned it right it, the polyurethane space is very well established um can you tell us a little bit more about that kind of mixing and like working with polyurethanes in that way and some of the benefits there yeah, it started many years ago with chemists discovering the fact that mixing two particular chemicals in a bucket and hand mixing would develop this incredibly light and strong and useful material that could replace metals, that could make vehicles lighter, that could make uh, um, insulated environment and help preserving food, for instance. So it was something that changed the world, but at the beginning it was really uh, a bucket, two chemicals and somebody steering. And uh, in the past 60 years, we saw the development of technologies that could automate this whole process 
and we reached a point where we have equipment connected in the cloud, connected with other equipment, um, communicating with different plants, and at the same time making parts one after the other within just a few seconds. So uh, companies like ours followed the chemical discovery and was able to industrialize the whole process, which is beautiful because now we're talking about extremely large volumes. We're talking about the possibility to change several industries, which is something that already happened. And uh, what happens during impingement in a very, very tiny space in what we call a mixing chamber, it's kind of like magic. We have uh, chemicals that are designed to, to operate and, and get together at very, very high pressures and temperature in a chemically controlled way used in fluid dynamics. So high pressures, high energy, turbulence that help the chemistry. And it doesn't seem so when, when you see a piece of plastic made of polyurethane, but actually the way it happens is pretty spectacular. Yeah, and I think the the one thing that I was surprised about in um, working with you guys is the the amount of you know consumables is is eliminated. Um, a lot of the maintenance is eliminated because of the technology that you guys are doing with your equipment. That was some of the benefits that I saw that would be impactful, you know, to to people using this technology. Yeah, so just to piggyback off of what Andrea said, um, the impingement mixing is is really spectacular in, in that um, originally it was designed or polyurethane was incepted to be mixed by hand in a large container. That means you have two very different chemicals that need to be mixed on an anatomical level. So that means a lot of stirring so that every individual cell of each part bonds together. With impingement mixing, you can achieve that mixing, that thorough mixing at a very quick and very efficient method. So the high pressure chemicals get pushed through a very small orifice turning into a spray. And in that spray, these tiny, tiny droplets of each chemical are smashed opposing each other um, at a very high rate of speed. So the high pressure translate into the velocity, throwing these, these small droplets at each other, having that hand mix, but a million times in one second for a million different droplets, creating a, a very quick mix. And since there's not anything mechanical or any really moving pieces that assist in the spray, there's essentially no cleanup after. So it's just mixing and then the, the chemicals are together in a different location. And the way that our, um, our mixing heads work, which our mixing heads are incredible, they, they are mixed into these chambers within the mix head. And once the mix head is open or closed, the chemicals are completely pushed through this chamber, through this cylindrical chamber by an inner cylindrical rod, essentially. And in, in that way, we have very little cleanup almost no waste, almost no cleanup, and very accurate, repeatable shots. Yeah, the other thing that when you're explaining that process is there's no purge. So the amount, so that waste is significantly reduced when compared to a, a mixer tip. So that's, mm -hmm. um, that's also super impactful. So thanks for, for bringing that up. Definitely. Yeah, that's yeah and just how fast you can go too. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> Yeah, the flow rates are just through the roof. Yeah. So um, we're trying to, it's like, can we go slower? <laughs> I know, we were dispensing parts and I turned around and we were done. I was like, ah. <laughs> oh, Some applications for polyurethane require very, very large amounts of material in a short amount of time. And we were actually using one of the, um, not the lowest, but the middle to low mix heads. So we can go even much lower than what we've done in the lab. But it's it's really spectacular technology. Yeah, I was impressed. I, I haven't I hadn't seen it in action before. So that was the first time I've I've seen that technology. So um you guys have a really good uh, I think a piece of equipment that could people can, you know, get a lot of benefits from. Yeah, I agree. And you guys have impeccable chemicals as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. We like to think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
What do you guys, from your, you know, experience and working in all these um, battery customers, OEMs, what do you find, you know, is, you know, what do you enjoy about the battery industry in general and, you know, how you impact that industry? We like the fact that everything is new and that uh, we are figuring out many, many aspects of it along with the OEMs along with whoever is developing uh, these batteries. Um, it would be nice if uh, we can work together towards the definition of a battery design, taking into account what we're trying to do with polyurethane. So polyurethane is used to uh, insulate the different cells, cylindrical cells inside the battery against you know, mechanical impacts or stress or, you know, temperature and preventing uh, shorts, uh, preventing flammability and things like that. So uh, it's an extremely important part of the, the, the battery and, uh, and the performance of the car. So uh, we like the fact that we, our, our technology can help safety and it can, can help development of a product that is changing the automotive business. I agree. There's a, there's just so much to the industry and there's not really a specific one way to do it. So it, it keeps things very interesting. And like we said before, we, li we like being on, th on the forefront of developing these new things because one, it's really interesting. And two, it's it's great for everybody involved to be able to, you know, push humanity in a, in a new direction. And, and battery technology is definitely on the forefront of of the future. Yeah, I think we find, Doreen and I find ourselves learning new things every day, unintentionally, <laughs> yes. as, we, yeah. as we go through this journey. <laughs> well, that's great. That keeps, that keeps life interesting, right? Yeah, it definitely does. Every day is a little bit different. Yeah, I'm like, what class are we taking today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. What yeah deep same. dive into batteries. <laughs> yeah. That's all world too. We get a new request for something that we've never heard of before. And then just like that, we have to become experts. So I'm sure you guys yeah. have the same. But I think it does put us in a unique position, right? Where we can kind of see so many different things from so many different people and kind of like that behind the scenes curtain, you know, we always say like, we kind of get to see how things are made. But I think you guys are also in the same boat because you're the one making the stuff putting the parts together. So it's, it's, it's very cool. You know, it's a, a great place to be in, in terms right. of the battery space. So yeah, it's different fun. spots in the, in the same process. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, um, that kind of has actually a really good segue, I would think into kind of the next segment where we wanted to kind of, we call it battery banter. We haven't had a fight break out yet. <laughs> oh. This could be the first one. <laughs> No, I, hope so. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> but, um, gloves, but... <laughs> yeah, kind of in line with what we were talking about, though, right? Um, and Conandre, you mentioned that there's so many different ways to define what a battery is, and so you know everyone's doing something a little differently. There seems to be kind of two buckets, right? So the cell to module, where things are more on a modular level, versus cell to pack. Um, and so on the market today, there is not as many companies using cell to pack. And so it's, I'm curious as kind of what your thoughts is, why you think that is, you know, like Tesla, BYD, um, BW, they all kind of seem to have that cell to pack. Is everyone, do we think are behind or do we think there's actually more benefits to the module level that maybe will, they'll come back to that, you know? It seems to yeah, be the I most efficient for them. Uh, for what we see, you know, like, like I said, design is important. And when we work together with these guys, um, you know, we, 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 we try to come up with different ideas on how to make our process more uh, uh, user friendly for everybody, how to make, a, you know, the, the goal is to fill a battery with polyurethane. And so we, we ask many, many questions about the design. Uh, we would like to have more space in between cells, for instance, to inject or distribute polyurethane using our equipment and but the design to, seems to be pretty set on cylindrical cells and that's just a matter of trying to minimize the size of the battery uh, considering that already reached 
maximum efficiency. So the design is pretty sad. It's our goal is to find a way to fill these batteries and go through very, very narrow spaces with our equipment and fill the whole thing completely, which is still a challenge and we're working towards that. Yeah, and I think going the cell to pack way that you're describing um, really helps with um, eliminating components in the battery pack and allowing for this larger energy density um, to be implemented and reduces the weight a lot. So there's a lot of benefits um, and also just the cost of the overall battery going, you know, using modules increases the cost and weight. Um, so I think helping us get a lower cost, lower price battery, um, the cell to pack really helps um, achieve this versus I, the cell to module. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. I think that a lot of automotive manufacturers right now are, since batteries are, you know, you don't see a lot of uh, electric cars on the road right now, at least. So it's still an upcoming industry. And the easiest way for any battery manufacturer to make them right now is with existing materials. So to do cell to pack, you would need something that can produce polyurethane and you have to buy chemicals to be able to do that. Whereas cell to module, you're essentially buying materials that you cut and put in place. And along with that, um, cell to pack is a, a, little, a little bit harder to, ma to maintenance, especially if some of the cells within the pack or are damaged or faulty uh, you can just replace modules but again you for the modules you would have to make uh something to encapsulate the modules which are encapsulating the cells so it's essentially extra manufacturing steps extra costs that you don't really need right now but it's the upfront material and it's the whole new way of doing things versus how it's been done before us but I think as as the industry grows, as technology grows, and as electric cars become more pervasive and you see them more on the road, you will see companies moving to the more efficient way of creating them, which is, I believe, cell pack. Yeah, I, you know, I do think that cell to module is maybe probably the shorter kind of barrier to entry as far as right. getting into the space as a battery battery manufacturer, right? Uh, whether on a vehicle level or whatnot. So I can kind of see why the the benefit in it and just like the standardization, right? So you can kind of outsource some things. It's easier to kind of create a design on a modular level, but as far as, and so maybe that's what needs to happen while, we, especially North America, right? Where we get it all, like, we grow the EV market to what we thought it would be five years ago, what we thought today would be. Um, but I do think eventually once it's established here, which I don't think it is, um, people will probably start moving to the more sell to pack. But right now, there is a lot of benefits of cell to module just as far as you know starting somewhere as a yeah. ev it's producer all about starting right couldn't agree it's also a matter think, of safety yeah i think yeah. it's safety right. as well um but i think um if we want to compete with the chinese prices of their batteries versus ours we're going to have to do something different to get our costs down otherwise we're not going to be competitive as an you know as a north america battery manufacturer. So I think it's important that we start making that transition to less, you know, parts, components, better efficiencies. So I think, and I think, you know, Tesla's gotten there and you can see by their sales. I think they just announced today, I saw that they're, they, they exceeded their expectations and in 2025, they're going to, they expect even larger growth. Well, you see a lot of, you know, Volkswagen's closing plants, you know, in Europe, North Volt's struggling. Um, so I think you'll see a lot of you, the ones that are doing sell to pack are more are being more successful, I guess, because they're reducing their costs. That's my point with that. But I think that's I, critical. We were seeing that within our customer base too, not to mention anybody in particular, but it is definitely growing sell to pack, yeah. especially with the large manufacturers. Yeah, and we'll see what regulations play into that too. You know, we mentioned safety, you know, if it, and but also kind of the things that people need to develop to fit a certain a certain standard 
you know, that might change things as well, right? The recyclability aspect of things, the safety aspect. If one design is geared to that more than the other, then that might shift things and make it more favorable. But it'll, it'll be weird. It'll be interesting, I should say, to see how that plays a role. Yeah, I, that's I a very I... good point because, sorry, it's a very good point because uh, things are not very regulated yet. So every OEM right. we work with, they have their own different ways of doing things. And they're still a little bit hesitant of adapting their design towards better safety and all that. What they're looking for right now is production, first and foremost. And then, you know, as, as things go by, as things evolve, yes, they, they refine the design. Uh, but first right. production and then the definition of the design that is more efficient and safer. Right, exactly. Undoubtedly. And polyurethane is the key because if you are able to insulate these cells, if you're able to limit mechanical shocks, if you're able to uh, prevent flammability and things like that, then you have a safer product. That you don't have uh, instances of uh, cars catching fire because that's another, uh, it's another reason because the, the electric cars are not as developed as in other countries. So design is important and design can be driven by regulations that are not there yet. Yeah. Right. I think the uh, the standard operating procedure for batteries for electric vehicles on fire right now in the United States is essentially just to let them burn because there's nothing that you can do about it. But polyurethane would definitely have an effect, especially if they have fire retardant features, which HP Fuller has within their chemicals. And I think that'll be a very, very critical and important part moving forward within this application. Yeah, I think it's important is that we're we're flexible, right? I, it, you know, if you can kind of do all parts of it, right? I think you were alluding to it. We have products where you can take out components because of the foam um, and make it lightweight, but more structural. But also we can support the modular level too, and as well as you know, you guys as well with Canon. So I think it's still a shifting industry. So kind of we're in a good space where we can support whatever happens. I agree. It's very interesting. There's not really one way to do it yet. So there's a lot of a lot of trial and error and a lot of moving into do new, into new spaces. But yeah. That's cool. But I wouldn't have it the other way. So yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I agree. It's always fun and interesting and you get to work with smart people and learn new things. So that's one thing I appreciate about it. Yeah, very, very smart people. Yeah. It was like there's there's no shortness of short yeah. smart people. You get to go to Cranberry people. Township. That was fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. My first yeah, time. <laughs> oh, it's a wonderful place, especially yeah. this time of year. It's great. <laughs> when are you coming back? Hopefully soon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah. We've got we've got other we've got new products. Yeah. That you guys haven't seen yet. So yeah, we'd love to test them. <laughs> yeah, and then you guys will have to make it out to St. Paul, Minnesota. Oh yeah, definitely. Maybe after February. The Around February. Yeah. <laughs> January, February is the best time. Yeah. Trust Middle me. Middle of summer, whenever it's a little bit above 60. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or we could just all go to Italy. We could just go, you oh, know. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Huh? yeah you could see our, our large R and D lab force them to make you guys make use their machines. <laughs> yeah, because they're doing the same things. I mean, not the same things. They're, they're, they're developing equivalent programs with, you know, the U European OEMs and uh, chemical suppliers. So it would be interesting to, uh, and that's actually what we do, compare the way we're doing things in North America and Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why it's so good to have awesome. so many different branches and different places. We were talking to our um, Japanese colleagues who are working with your Japanese colleagues on a very similar endeavor. And that's just really interesting. I'm, I'm very excited to see the results and compare. Yeah, we're excited. The, about world, that too. the world's tiny now. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, uh, Andrea, Shane, thank you so much for joining us. It's been great to kind of get your insight on the battery space, 
as well as learn more about Canon. So thank you so much for having or for being on the podcast. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for inviting us. It was a pleasure. And, and I think that we'll continue to work well in the future together. Thank you very much for having us and for organizing this. Yeah, absolutely. Well, no, well, thank you. But and totally agree. A lot more to come um, from the both of us for sure. But um, with that, I just kind of wanted to say, you know, it's been great talking to you both. Um, and that's all the time that we have today. Um, so I just want to thank you. I want to thank everyone who's listening for joining us um, and make sure that you join us next month for another episode of the Battery Buzz podcast. Um, we're going to be having some special guests from a company, Veridi Parente, join us to discuss their battery um, energy storage systems technologies. So that's uh, that should be exciting. So stay tuned. And if you have comments or questions on today's discussion, feel free to comment or give us your insights. Um, please subscribe, um, like, and follow, and check out the Electrical Battery Adhesive page on LinkedIn. Awesome. Bye. Thank you. Bye.